of things. And uh, uh, there are different frameworks to look at different factors for mental health. Uh, a number of frameworks really exist, and you could find really different classifications. Uh, one that I'm aware of recently uh, that we have applied in some of our work is the relational well-being for drivers of mental health, especially youth mental health. But by and large or broadly, you have three main classifications of factors or drivers for mental health, things that cause mental health in people. Uh, the pathways may not necessarily be clear, and this is really subject to the work that we could be hoping to see from the applicants who are part of this uh, group uh, here today. So we have biological factors, as you can see listed there, and again, these could be things that uh, 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 trigger biological processes, and they are not themselves biological factors. So alcohol could trigger biological processes that really uh, either exacerbate or uh, cause uh, through some mechanism uh, mental health conditions. And this really has been done through uh, causal linkage or association linkages in epidemiological studies. So you have what's listed there as biological factors. You also have what can be listed as physiological factors, issues around body image, and you can see how that links with self-stigma and self-appreciation. Uh, gambling is a new area in most African countries. Certainly in Kenya, we are seeing a lot of effects linked to sports, gambling, problematic gambling and uh, use of uh, uh, gadgets uh, for perhaps online gaming as well, uh, having a link with mental mental health, perhaps not mental health disorders, but at least mental health problems, and especially within the younger population. And of course, issues around trust, trauma can be classified under physiological factors. Uh, the other category of uh, factors affecting mental health would can actually be classified as social factors. Um, and, uh, you know, social factors, the environment in which people live, the community in which they live, and how they are treated or how they treat other people or how they consider themselves either to be lucky or not lucky within the environment naturally. And that has got everything to do with their uh, socioeconomic, uh, you know, uh, status, uh, the issues around friendships and relationships, issues around employment and occupation. You see how that links back again to such economic status. So you could consider this part of the social determinants of mental health in this case, uh, in the bigger definition of social determinants of health, as it were. Uh, things around work-life balance, and, I, and, and this has been demonstrated in the realization among institutions that if staff are helped to uh, practice work-life balance, combining or learning to balance quality and quantity of work that they actually report better uh, you know health which is really an exhibition of uh, better uh, mental health because as we know there is no health without mental health so we have social factors we have physiological factors and biological factors and I must again reiterate that there are different frameworks that classifies these factors depending on how you want uh, from which angle you want to look at that if you're looking at a uh, relational well-being structure it could be looking at individual level factors uh, which could cut across all these conditions uh, all these classifications it could be looking at uh, social factors you could be looking at environmental factors it just depends on how you want to class for by the end of the day you'll still find all these individual uh, factors and these are not even half of what you could think for will still be captured within whatever classification that you want. Diana, you need to remind me if 